for folks who don't know, the Free State Project is a movement of voluntary human action where we are trying to concentrate libertarians in the state of New Hampshire. I think we've got done uh, more in the last decade than every other libertarian movement combined has accomplished in the last five decades. Are my friends and my neighbors who are willing to stand against tyranny, make their voices heard, and have a goddamn impact. You have a problem with too many people are afraid to say what they believe in, but it'll actually do something about it. If you're afraid to stand outside the TSA line and piss off 97% of people who are waiting to just take the bar and build up their ass in five seconds, then you're probably not ever going to make the change. Free State Project, again, it's, it's 1% of the Free State movement. I am a friend of the Free State Project. And would you encourage people to check a it out? Absolutely. Check it out. Find out. If you like it, join us. Continue the effort. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, libertarians, anarchists, movers, natives, and those on your way, thank you for tuning in for another episode of Free State Live, where you get to hear about all the ways you can live free and thrive in the free state of New Hampshire. And first and foremost, time to welcome back your host. I'm Justin O'Donnell, host of the Subversive Podcast and a former libertarian candidate for U.S. Senate here in New Hampshire. And joining me tonight, as always, the man with too many abortion jokes, local comedic talent, tall Bill, rancher extraordinaire. How are you, Bill Barker, tonight? Doing great, man. Good to be back from Pork Fest. Good to have the show going again. I feel like I missed a couple episodes. So no, here. I didn't even catch your stand-up, but I hear you bombed with the abortion jokes. How'd that go? Okay, the first night went really, really well. I did all the abortion jokes. They did great. I did all the abortion jokes. The second night, they did pretty good. The third night, it was terrible. It was like, the more I did it, the more I did it, the less people liked it. I mean, I guess you need better material or new material and you can't just hit the same crowd with the same shit every time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and back again, as always, keyboard activist and organizer of Discord. I think that's a pun in there I can work. Kevin from the internet. Kevin, how are you? <laughs> good, good. Still um, very much waking up and recovering from Porkfest now. I mean, it's a long time to recover from. Day. I wasn't even, I wasn't even there the whole time. Uh, so, and joining us tonight, we have podcaster, trucker extraordinaire, New Hampshire native, and newly welcomed home to the free state from the deserts of the West. Reed Coverdale. Reed, how are you? Thanks for tuning in. Welcome home. Thank you, Justin. I'm doing well. It is good to be back in the free state, the granite state. Um, live free or die. Fuck yeah. Absolutely. So everybody watching should have known we weren't here last week, and we weren't here last week with good reason. Everyone was at Pork Fest. Reed, was this your first Pork Fest, or did you ever go before leaving? Negative. This is my second Pork Fest. It came. All right. <clears throat> it's kind of funny. Last year, living out in Utah, I flew home to come for two days. But uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. You all want to know about how how well we do Pork Fest every year? Uh, I knew that because Reed came and hang out for my side of it last year at Borkfest, and I should have remembered that, but I was definitely not in a state to remember anything. So <laughs> no, yeah, it was weird seeing you at Porkfest in a semi-cognitive state, you know, it was like, all right, you know, or cognizant state, but yeah, it was, it was good, so. So, I, I mean, how is everybody else's Porkfest? Bill, you, you did your stand-up and you ended up bombing uh, doing the same jokes three nights in a row um, you want to hammer that in or... <laughs> yeah i do want to hammer it in i mean it's like the one thing bill's got going on here is he's the funny one so we can make fun of him for losing yeah <clears throat> <laughs> But uh, no, no, it was a great pork fest all around. I actually missed most of it. I missed the majority of pork fest, and I was upset this year. I had to stay home and work on some stuff, including working on some campaign stuff for the Jeremy Kaufman campaign, uh, which I ended up being penalized in Soapbox Idol for being late by Jeremy Kaufman. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, what was your highlight of the year this year? Start to finish, I mean, what, what do you guys think was the best part of your pork fest to set this one apart? Uh, Kevin, go. Um, for me, um, I mean, I didn't do a lot in terms of jumping on the schedule or doing a lot of stuff. I ran a discord meetup and that was really cool because a lot of those guys, uh, especially guys that were visiting or, or coming to move for the first time, meeting a lot of them was, was really interesting. They've done a ton of stuff to get here and a lot of work. So that was pretty good. Um, and that was just sitting around drinking and, and loitering. Um, <clears throat> but, oh, it, until David Friedman sat down to join the discord, uh, hang out and started just doing a random ask me anything so that was real like hey man, the, you, you can't pay for that kind of shit so, <laughs> right, right, right yeah right. It, was, it was pretty awesome he just kind of 
can I sit here? What are you guys doing? What'd you think? And a couple of guys have been to their talk. So that was really, really good. Um, the other one was, I mean, we come up with a toddler. So I bring my two-year-old up with my wife and uh, for those, for him to play all week with Jeremy's kids and it, just all the families up there at the playground, there's someone brought a bounce house, there's the pool. So we just made a huge run of, of kids stuff in between trying to catch talks or something like that. So it was, it was again, another awesome, successful pork fest. This year I wore obnoxious outfits, so that was also a <laughs> rousing theme success. To the week. It did have Bill, a theme. Bill, aside from like bombing on your third night of comedy, like what what did you actually enjoy this year that was different? I mean, so there's there's a couple things. I think my favorite favorite part is just seeing all the people that I haven't seen in a year. Because last year was my first pork fest, and you meet so many people at pork fest that are not from around here that want to maybe move but haven't got it set up yet or haven't decided fully, and. Uh, Sometimes you meet them like there's people I met last year and talked to for hours, never got their number, never exchanged info. I was like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to see that dude again or talk to that chick again who's taking those cool photos. And it's like you're running like, oh, this is awesome. Like you, this, you know, maybe you'll only be my pork fest friend, but like <laughs> there's people you only see at pork fest and seeing them is great. And also seeing like all the people here from New Hampshire. There's so many there's so many libertarians that are great. Uh, it's impossible to see all of them. They don't all make it to the same events. They're not all in the same part of the state. And they were all like they're all there they're, you know in one day you'll see all of them at once so that's i think that's my favorite thing is just getting all the people there at once uh, and now reed this wasn't just like your second pork fest or a pork fest for you this was your welcome home you just got back to the state right before pork fest you made that cross-country trip in the move um I, I mean was it a different experience coming back knowing you got to stay yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> it's not my first time returning to New Hampshire. I left uh, in 2014, in the end of 2014, the first time, and moved back in 2016, uh, just before the election. And then I stayed until 2020 and left in March of 2020. So it wasn't the first time coming back. So it's a familiar feeling, but uh, it has a little more purpose this time. Last time I came back, it was because I didn't really know what I wanted to do, I just finished a road trip up in Alaska and had been to all 50 states. So it was kind of out of money and uh, had finished a certain, um, you know, a certain voyage in my life. So I was kind of starting over. But uh, this time I'm here with a purpose. So it's a little different. Uh, as far as Porkfest goes, you know, the, uh, the, the January 6th didn't go far enough crowd, doesn't have enough representation, and I was proud to have you stand up there at the rant and give us some uh, publicity. But uh, the coolest part for me was probably doing the speech in the pavilion. That was obviously a new experience for me, and it's been pretty cool to go from being nobody to being somebody in two years in this liberty movement. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I do say it's it, it is a really fun and a transition to a witness because like I remember when you first reached out to me to invite me to come onto your podcast. I think it was one of your first guests on your show, and I was sure. like, oh, "Who the heck is this guy?" Oh, I think I vaguely remember this guy from like the Tulsi campaign or something weird, and had a great conversation. And then like a year later, uh, you're headlining Pork Fest. So, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> what a transit! What a year! Like what a, two years it's been in the. I mean really a crappy two years for liberty all around but a great two years for new hampshire and the community oh yeah and the movement here in new hampshire that we've seen and that all culminates every year at pork fest and it really was fantastic now that you're here now that you're home i mean like what's next for you where are you what, what's on your but, track record now that you have but, a purpose well i was gonna say before you ask that can we ask what got you to move sure um maybe, maybe right before see. I think I started thinking about it in like October of last year, um, mostly just because I was I was getting black pilled on the United States because, um, you know, I'd actually had Tho Bishop on my show a couple times and he makes a lot of really good points about most of the people in this country uh, when he says that you're not going to logically convince them to become libertarians. You got to hijack it through either right wing or left wing populism and you have to try to push them in your direction as much as you can and i think i think he actually unfortunately is correct about most americans but i'm just not about that so um i started realizing if i want to live in a world where people think logically and care about each other's 
you know, personal liberty and aren't trying to infringe on each other all the time, then I probably just need to go somewhere where that's the status quo. And New Hampshire is the closest thing to that. And it's where I'm from, was born and raised here. Um, you know, no, have a lot of connections. So uh, I've worked here in a couple different places, know lots of people here. And at this point, like over half, or I don't know about that, but a lot of the people I network with are in New Hampshire anyway. So I came back for Thanksgiving and then I came back for Christmas. And it was really when I was back for Christmas, I was talking to my dad, telling him, you know, I'm really thinking about moving back. And then uh, the final straw was when Jeremy Kaufman won the nomination for Senate. I was like, all right, fuck it. What am I doing here? <laughs> or, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on here. I said, screw it. I'm moving back. So um, here I am. And, uh, so you plan to get involved in the LP sooner rather than later? Yes, sir. Yeah, I still need to. I'm, I'm still technically not a New Hampshire resident again yet. I still have a Utah driver's license. Um, and I haven't officially joined up with the New Hampshire Libertarian Party yet. But I'm already working on Jeremy Kaufman's campaign. I was helping him out today with some campaign ads. This coming weekend, I'm going to uh, be petitioning for him, getting signatures. Um, I'm going to pitch in any way I can. Then I'm actually going around the country this summer a little bit. I'm going out to Vegas for Freedom Fest, going down to Young Americans for Liberty in August. Both of those events uh, I'm getting sponsored for, so it's kind of cool. Uh, so I'll be doing nationwide libertarianing, but doing a lot of it back here at home because uh, I think that the the mission of the Free State Project is the it's the most attainable within my lifetime. So I'm I'm all in on it. That's I awesome. love it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so you're bringing uh you're bringing your podcast to New Hampshire. You got to bring Tower Gang to New Hampshire. Well, yeah, we uh, Toad is the closest. You know, he's only right over the border in Massachusetts, and he is quite the mountaineer. He found out when I dragged him up Mount Washington a few days ago. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think we'll get him to move sooner than any of the other guys. The other ones are. They're into DeSantis and, you know, extreme humidity and alligators and crazy mosquitoes. So I don't think we're going to get them anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, yeah Toad, Toad will be a good start. I, 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 I saw Toad the night before you did Washington and was talking to him in the Mises tent. And he started talking to me about it. And I'm an Eagle Scout from New Hampshire. So I'm a native as well. And I've, I've done the presidential range and every peak of all the 4,000 mm. for 48, 4,000 footers and everything else. Same. And I was like, yeah. are you, are you, are you sure you know exactly <laughs> what this is? And just, you know, you know, just be ready, bring some extra water. And then I just like explain like, well, Reed's making me go up there. I'm like, well, he's from New Hampshire. So you'll be fine. And he's like, are you sure, man? You kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, you'll make it. You'll make it. So How long that, whole, it that whole story has got to be great. I, I can't. Well, imagine. if you, if you've done the 48, you know, Mount Washington is not the hardest one. There's no, it's kind no. of a mistake there. Uh, Mount Adams is way harder. So yeah. is Mount Isolation, <laughs> Owl's Head. There's tons of them that yeah, are yeah, yeah, much yeah. more difficult. Well, I did those when I was like a kid. So they didn't seem the same. Yep. Yeah, unless, they're doing Tucker, <laughs> yeah. unless they're doing Tuckerman's, there's a few passes. Yeah. Huntington really and well. Tuckerman's. Those are a yeah. little rough. But yeah, yeah, no, I said, there's no way you're doing that. You'll be fine, man. So that'd be good. Yeah. I, I wish I had gone. That, that would have been funny to watch. So how long did <laughs> it take? Um, well, I will. I don't know how many people know this, but we did end up taking the cog down. Okay. Um, oh, okay. It's actually a hilarious uh, story. Yeah. So I. I mean, I'm just I, before we get into this, I'm going to say I am proud that he made it to the top. Like, I'm proud of him. But yeah. uh, it's he's probably the worst guy I've ever taken hiking before, or at least like pretty close. It was, it was really bad. So it got to the point where we were closer to the top than turning around and going to the bottom. And I was like, <laughs> OK, there's just I got to motivate him. So I was just like, Toad, you just got to get to the top and we'll figure something out. So I sort of jokingly texted Justin like, Hey, you want to do a rescue, a search and rescue mission up the auto road on Washington? Um, and he laughed back. He said his radiator fan was blown or something. And I was like, well, yeah, don't worry about it too much yet. Like uh, I'm going to try to figure something out. But I was, I was kind of freaking out a little bit because um, I've been up Mount Washington 18 times. I think that was my 18th time, but I'd never been with someone that, slow and it was getting so bad 
that I was like, man, if we go back down, I'm probably literally going to have to give him a piggyback ride at some point. Like he's just not going <laughs> to make it. So, uh, I, he was with one other, I forget what the other guy's name was that was with us, but he was pretty good. And so we were like half a mile from the top. And I said, all right, you know how just go up till you get to the top. I'll meet you guys up there. I'm going to go make sure we could get some sort of ride down. And, uh, I'd actually never been on the cog railroad ever. I'd taken the road a couple times, <laughs> yeah, but I'd never been on the cog and it's only a $40 ticket to go down. So we just took it down and we had gone up the jewel trail. So the truck was down in the parking lot there, but it was good. It was, it was fun. I'm glad he made it up and I'm glad uh, I didn't have to carry him down. So. Yeah. <laughs> so was that, was that your favorite part of pork fest? Not carrying toad down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a little guy, but he's pretty big for a little guy, if you know what I'm saying. So I wasn't, I wasn't looking forward to carrying him down the mountain at all. <laughs> well, it's, a good, it's a good experience well, to hike it. You got to do it. It is. Yeah, it is. I mean, Mount Washington's not my favorite because, you know, you do this crazy hike and then you end up in a restaurant and there's a train station and, you know, some 600 pound woman in flip flops who just drove yeah. up the auto road. And, you the know, tourist. getting on top of Mount Madison is a lot more of the uh, nature experience, I'd say. But yeah. So what was your favorite part of Sport Fest? Uh, I think, uh, man, I don't know. I had, a, I had a blast the whole time, um, but it was really cool given the speech in the pavilion. Um, and it, it was cool having Clint, uh, my friend Tony, who I've known forever. My parents were both there. The Jackmans were both there and kind of having everybody in, you know, in the same crowd talking to each other. It's That's what's wild. really cool to me about Porkfest is people that you never really envisioned all being in the same room or same tent or whatever they're all conversing that, that was pretty cool yeah you can have like david friedman and jeffrey tucker and you and like um i guess well Corey DeAngelis wasn't there but he came to mind for some reason and like the uh jody underwood just all all hanging out talking you know and like po just between podcasters and activists and like intellectuals and economists and just random dudes just random like just random people like us just showing up it's great Mm -hmm. yeah for sure um i mean it's it, it, it's a different um it's a different group of people than you get at like freedom fest or um any of the other libertarian events i go to it, the, the cool thing about pork fest is liberty is what's bringing everyone there not um anything i mean you got like satanists and nudists and christians and second amendment people and gold people and bitcoin people and they're all just kind of hanging out and i don't know that's pretty cool that's kind of the spirit of new hampshire so well, those last three are pretty much the same people yeah that's, that's, true. Different, <laughs> that's different at for like freedom fest i don't know i have no idea what happens at those other places you know that's like in north dakota or something right uh yeah it's in vegas this year but last year it was in south dakota and uh it was a very interesting libertarian neocon split um oh, i mean so it's yeah like a war Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like Larry Elder was speaking. Christy Nome was speaking. Uh, who else was there? Uh, and then he had like Dave Rubin, people like mm. that. Um, Ion Hersey Ali was speaking about how awful Muslims are or whatever. And then he had like Scott Horton get up and you had Dave Smith and uh, Mike Lee. It was all sorts of different like right leaning people i mean what what some people define <clears throat> as liberty is not the same as we would so interesting mix for sure well I, I mean that's a really interesting like realization that i think a lot of people don't have or have soon after moving to new hampshire and we get a lot of people who move for the free state project who get surprised when there's kind of a more libertine uh, twist to pork fest and they get shocked by the nude olympics happening happening on the far end of the campground yeah. or <laughs> hippies um, with dreadlocks the late night edm spaces and raves that are happening in the adult side of pork fest and I, I remember last year there was a guy who showed up to pass out uh american flags to celebrate patriotism and were shocked when no one wanted one <laughs> uh, uh, but, right. but it it shows a different aspect. Like there is all types. Like the I guarantee you, they won't let them do the nude Olympics in the hotel at Freedom Fest. Oh right. yeah, no. But they're free to do that at Pork Fest as long as they're not bothering anyone. By the way, someone pointed out in the comments the difference between citizen and resident, 
And yes, so I am a resident. I'm not technically a citizen yet. Citizen is a legal uh, citizen of a state or whatever, where resident is just someone who's legally living there. So good point. Uh, it tends to be a distinction without a difference once the feds have their say, which is why we it's don't true. like the feds. Uh, <laughs> one of the reasons we don't like the feds is because they make shit like that matter. Um, well, what was your favorite event? Up? Did you actually bother to see any speakers other than yourself or spend time in the pavilion? I know myself, I've joked in the past five pork fests, the only times I've stepped foot in the pavilion was times when I was on stage speaking um, for a soapbox idol or shark tank or something like that. What, like, did, how much time did you spend in the festival ground versus the academic like stage area? And like, what was your like takeaway of the value or value from each part? Yeah, I did see several speeches. I saw Clint Russell's uh, speech in the pavilion about ESG. Um, also saw Scott Horton's speech in the pavilion. And then I think Ashton gave a speech early on that I saw. Um, and then I did go, uh, I'm trying to, uh, Josh Smith did a speech in the pavilion that I listened to. Um, then there were a couple other things that came in and out of, uh, I spent most of my time in the Mises tent. Um, and yeah, it got pretty wild in there a couple times. It was a lot of fun. Um, but it was also like kind of in the middle of the day, it was an easy place to go chill and kind of fall half asleep and no one would bother you unless they had questions about something. And yeah, so it was all over the place in and out on Mount Washington and, you know, uh, yeah, it was good. What was it like doing a live episode of tower gang? I'm a, I'm a tower gang fan. So it was fun sitting down to get, watch you guys get to do that for a bit. <clears throat> I mean, as opposed to the online versus in person. Yeah, I mean, Tower Gang is an interesting phenomenon. We uh, just press record and act like morons, and that's pretty much all we do, and it's successful for some reason. Uh, so that's basically what we did uh, live, but we got the laughs and um, you know the reactions from the people who were there. So it was cool. Uh, Richard Grove was our first guest, and then we had Josh Smith on, and then uh, Robbie the Fire, so... It was pretty fun. I think it was raining, wasn't it? Or cloud? Yeah, it was, it was really super bit, yeah. cloudy at that point. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was we, fun. We, now, we did talk about doing a live episode of this show at Pork Fest. It's just we didn't even have the idea until it was too late to put the logistics yeah. together. And all right. of us were making different plans already. I mean, for those of you watching, was he going to chat? Tell us next. Tell us for next year. Would you guys want to see us do a live show? Maybe from the stage, maybe upstairs. Tell us where you want it to happen. If you'd show up, who you'd want us to have on? Because, heck, one of the beauties of being involved with the management of the Free State Project is we can kind of do what we want at Porkfest. So right. come on, guys. Let us know if you want it to happen, and we'll make it happen. Um, I mean, would you do it again, great. Reed? <laughs> oh, yeah. I will be there next year. Next year, I'll actually have a tent. Uh, like, not just uh, one to sleep into, but I mean, like, a, a site with uh, some of my stuff. And I'm also going to do a planned ascent up Mount Washington instead of just kind of spur of the moment. So hopefully we can get some other people who actually like to hike. Um, and who knows what else I'll do. I'll have something going on, though. So uh, I'll, I'll definitely be there. Uh, Pork Fest is, is awesome. I, I was just going to be there for two days, but I ended up being there for five and I don't regret it. So yeah, I'm glad I gave you a hard time in advance. Like what? Two days? Call yourself a free stater? <laughs> Come yeah. on, man. No, I, I was I was expecting to go up to see Scott Horton, and I got to give Scott Horton some shit about this. And I was messaging him literally like the night before, like, "Yeah, I'll be up tomorrow night," and and then he was gone before I got up there, and completely didn't mention that he was leaving early. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he like, also, never leave early. Never leave also, Pork Fest early. He also uh, had us. We booked a thing. It was like a. Uh, Hey, you want to sign some books and do a meet and greet this day? And he's like, yeah, I think I could do that. Just let me know when you want to do it. And we we're like, yeah, how's this day? He's like, yeah, that should work. And then, you know, it, it worked. It turned out he left before that. But I think that was just like everything being so <clears throat> last minute. We didn't ask him until like the week before. So if he glanced <laughs> oh, at his man. calendar, he's like, yeah, this should be fine. You know, 
it's whatever. And of all people to day. get, <laughs> of all people to get an autograph book from Scott, my brother was standing with me in the Mises tent, not knowing who he is. And I'm trying to kind of explain. So my brother just walks over and he's like, so I guess you like write books about like wars and stuff or something, dude. <laughs> and gets to talk to Scott for about 20 minutes one-on-one -on -one and have this great conversation. Scott brings him over, signs the copy of his book for him. And it's like, nice to meet you, dude. Take it easy. And I'm like standing with my jaw dropped, like, what you don't for his first pork fest, no idea who any of these people are, like you know, a libertarian, but really getting into this whole thing a lot more. And it was uh it was shocking. So that's really hilarious to hear that of all the people he came in, he came in ahead of time and got out of there with a with a signed copy of his book. Well, that's one of my favorite parts of pork fest. That's one of my favorite parts of the free state project and the liberty movement that we have here, anyways, is like how accessible people are and how accessible everyone in the movement and the community is. Like Reed talks about all the people he went to go see talk in the pavilion. And I'm sitting there like ah, I'm sure they gave interesting talks that I've heard before, and I could just text them and get the gist of it because I know all of them personally, uh, at this point. And I'm sure like four or five years, five, six, seven years ago, like earlier Porkfest, I would have been interested to see some of those. Uh, but it's at the time where like it, the longer you're here, the more you just get to know everybody. And it's not a big deal. Like you said, David Friedman just showing up to your site to just sit down and do an AMA. That just happens. And nobody's surprised. It's not actually a big deal. Like Scott Horton. Like he's as likely to pass a joint to you randomly as he is to hold a book signing. <laughs> Uh, right. in the Mises tent, it, it, he's just they're normal people at this point here. There's no super chill, no hero worship culture, and you can just have a conversation with them just like you can anyone else. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible how many people you know when when you when it comes down to it, it's not just <coughs> that you see David Friedman and Jeffrey Tucker and Reed Coverdale there, it's like they're all there just being regular. I mean. With rare exceptions, uh, they're not being like fanboyed to death, where people are just crowding around you, making sure you don't have a, like a, a single chance to uh, to uh, like walk away or escape. Like I've, I did see one guy get cornered. I, I don't remember who. I saw one guy who was giving a talk get cornered right after. I was like, oh, this poor guy has no chance of getting out. <laughs> um, and it was like he was just in the corner and ten people talking to him at once. It's like, dude, you're gonna be there for an hour if you don't like. They'll figure out a way, but most yeah. for the most part, you go there, and if you're really well known, you got a podcast, whatever. People are happy to see you. They'll come, they'll say hi, they'll talk to you as long as is appropriate, and they're not totally socially cued out, and they can, uh, they can just like leave you alone. You get to chill and mingle like a regular freaking person. Because there's honestly, I think it's because there's so many, right? You just there's you know economists and podcasters and all the New Hampshire people. There's crypto people. There's you know all sorts of interesting folks. Um, that have been doing their shit for a long, long time, and they and once you show up to more pork fest too, fewer people are like, "Oh my god, that's that's Reed Coverdale. I have to go talk to him. I may never see him again." It's like, no, no, no. This guy is into the liberty stuff that I'm into. He's gonna be here next year. It's like, just go see what he's about. It's nice. Yeah, I mean that the that that's kind of a pork fest thing too. Like I've been to. A lot of other libertarian events, and it's very much fangirling all the time. Like, even around me, like, when I went to the Tom Woods 2000 thing, I think, like, two or 300 people came up and shook my hand and, like, wanted to get autographs or pictures with me, and they were just, like, freaking out. And I was like, whoa, 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 take it easy. Like, this is a little, it's a little ridiculous, but you don't really get that at Pork Fest. It's just the vibe of the place. People are kind of chill, so. Yeah, I mean, I think they saw you you know, probably over a dozen times just sitting around, like either coming into the, up to the site and people are sitting around. You're like, am I going to sit with them or not? And like, it'd be a read. Nobody swarms him. He might go sit down with two or three other people. He might sit there for an hour. Or honestly, there was a couple times I saw you like walking over. I'm like, I wonder if Reed needs something to do. Like, I wonder if he's bored or whatever. I was like, should I, should I harass him and see if he'd like, you know, want something to do? And I was like, ah, he'll figure it out. He'll come. If he wants to come chill, he'll come talk to me. It's like, it was nice to see you like kind of doing your own thing and not being constantly harassed by a mob, you know? Um, I know yeah. Dave Smith can't get that experience. He's a little bit too famous. I think it's true. I mean, for me, it was nice Reed, Cause I mean, I've never met you before, but I, like I said, I follow you on, Twitter, social media, all that stuff. T watch Tower Gang. Knew you're a New Hampshire guy and a little bit about you. But again, it's like, yeah, oh, like you're just hanging out regular day. Like introduce myself. Say what's up from New Hampshire. I know you like hiking. Like, you know, that very easy mm -hmm. casual conversation. And that's the beauty of Porkfest. It's like I said, it's like 
anyone could be walking. Robbie fought, Robbie was walking by. I'm like, hey, what's going on, man? Like, all right, take it easy. Just a quick, like, cool to meet people, but it's not, it doesn't have the fanboy aspect. It doesn't have any of that type of thing. Um, right. To that point, a question or a thought I had was, as you're returning to New Hampshire, you have an audience. You have a whole, I mean, you're a big part of this whole thing. And nationwide, like you said, you're doing the tour and stuff like that. Um, what do you think that's going to do for the Free State Project or the LP here in New Hampshire as you're coming in? Like you're going to have much more of an impact than I am, just some dude. Um, what are you shooting to accomplish or get done? And and what can, you know, how does that marrying happen? Like, how do you take your audience and your influence and improve what's going on in New Hampshire? Yeah, I mean, I think the, first of all, I think the reason New Hampshire is going to be successful <clears throat> is that, you know, you have most of the legislature kind of drag, or not, not most of the legislature, but a good chunk of the legislature kind of leading the charge in the new direction. And we're kind of like dragging the governor along with us where it's kind of the opposite of what's going on in Florida In Florida, you have a governor who's trying to drag the rest of the state with them. And if that governor gets replaced, you know, everything that has been gained just evaporates and goes away where that hasn't been the model for things in New Hampshire. Even if we get a Democrat governor, you know, it'll probably be harder to get things passed that we want to pass for the most part, but uh, it's not just going to completely reshape the state at this point and i think that you know long term that will have you know better better lasting effect and will prove to be more conducive to liberty so i think the best thing we can do is lead by example to the other states i, I feel like you know the polarization is a real thing around the country that uh, california is going to get more and more and more progressive and places like alabama are going to get more and more and more ridiculously conservative and the reason I like New Hampshire is it's always been a pretty moderate state uh, culturally. You know, the Democrats tend to own guns. Lots of the Republicans tend to smoke weed. And there's this very live and let live mentality that exists here. Um, so I would like to see the Libertarian Party try to capitalize on that and get some Libertarians into office in New Hampshire. And if we can, I know I'm interested to see how Jeremy does this year. And I would like to see like in the next decade, I'd like to see New Hampshire get some federal libertarian um, representation, not so much to change the country, because I don't think we will, but just to send a message that we are serious here and, uh, you know, uh, have a platform for libertarian ideals in Congress or in the Senate or whatever, kind of like Ron Paul or Justin Amash or Thomas Massey or any of these people uh, have been able to do. I'd like to see that coming from New Hampshire. I'd like to see New Hampshire pass, um, defend the guard legislation. No other state has done it yet or is even close. I'd love to see that happen first here in New Hampshire. Um, you know, I know we're taking good strides on guns. I'd like to see us do the uh, same thing with drugs and the same thing with, um, you know, other libertarian issues. So I, I just like to see us become a force for, you know, unabashed liberty in the right direction and not like this kind of watered down version that Texas or Florida or South Dakota do, but something that's truly, um, you know, indicative of property rights and liberty and self-determination, you know, letting people live their lives the way they want, even if we don't like the way they're going. So I'd like to see it basically continue in the direction it has been for the last couple of years. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I mean, to your point, uh, one of the things I've noticed uh, here in New Hampshire, and statistically, New Hampshire is the least religious state in the country. Yes. Um, and nothing against religious people. I just find it odd how our conservatives and Republicans tend to be the not religious type. Uh, and they seem to be the most willing to embrace libertarianism. And that's how we get so many actual libertarians elected at the state level as Republicans. Um, but at the same time, we can't do simple shit like legalizing weed. That's been our big, right. one of our biggest hurdles here in the state for the longest time. Uh, we still are the island of prohibition. And, well, at uh, least, I mean, well, it's not hard to get weed for anyone asking. At least, at least we have not legalized it for the right reasons. Right, it's not because it's not because yeah. New Hampshire hates weed. It's literally because 
there's so many free staters in the legislature that like if we legalize weed and tax it at a huge percentage, we're growing the state and we it's don't want to do state that. monopoly. Yeah, yeah. right. We, we, so libertarian autism accidentally kept weed illegal and we made the democrats the party of prohibition uh, <laughs> somehow when the libertarians got the legal weed bill and managed to get enough votes to amend it so it took every last tax out of it so uh, like those are the bills we put forward the last bill they put forward two years ago uh, not this session the session before was to legalize weed and regulate it like tomatoes you could just grow it in your yard with no rules and nothing attached and the democrats uh, shot it down yeah, yeah. Gotta, gotta tax it. Um, yeah, we need all that money, yeah. all that blood money. We well, to be honest, like, one of the first moments that I started thinking about coming back to New Hampshire out in Utah, they were voting on legislation to ban pornography from mobile devices. And I was arguing with people about this. I was like, I don't care what you think about pornography, whether you like it or not. What types of steps do you think the government's going to have to take to be able to regulate whether or not? You're looking at pornography on your cell phone. Bingo. And around the, around the same time, New Hampshire was introducing legislation to secede from the union or let people vote on whether or not they'd want to secede from the union. And I was just like, this isn't comparable. <laughs> you know what our two states are doing here. So right. there's enough of a push to be like, okay, come on, time to go. But, right. You're trying to ban pornography on mobile devices. We're trying to secede from the union. We are not the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's true. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, to your point, that's Justin, not even a, by the way, not a free state or position. Free state uh, project does not endorse any uh, any secession bills or any any political bills or, or <clears throat> causes anything like that. Us as individuals, though. Yeah, so I'd love to an individualist in comment. Thing. So, um, of course, no, of course. Just yeah, but to, to, keeping it keeping it kosher here. To your point, Justin, about the, the culture of New Hampshire, I mean, my parents have been buying eggs out of a box that they just drop a dollar into a, you know, it's like fi leave five bucks, take a dozen eggs or whatever. They've been buying eggs that way for a decade in this unguarded roadside stand, you know, and that's just, you can do that here. Like there's this trust, this mutual trust between people who live here um the honors system is something that people still use around here lots of people don't lock their doors um it's, it's just a culture that's very conducive to liberty uh where you know if you're living in los angeles you don't really have that so um you don't really need religion or government for people to get along here they just sort of already do just because it's <laughs> the way we do things around here so yeah i might not be able to get vegan. avocados on the side of the road from a mexican standing in traffic but i can get fresh eggs raw milk in a home aged cheese and i can pay in silver or gold backs most of the time I, yeah so like the answer is the place to be if you want to do an agorism so to speak and actually opt out of the state and use these little gray markets of free trade that do exist because i i haven't seen that anywhere else that i've lived massachusetts georgia texas nowhere else where i have lived has i seen actual like just farmers markets where like people are willing to barter still yeah it's true so speaking of speaking of bartering, that's like half of the economy at Pork Fest. I think that's something that's not mentioned <laughs> enough. You can bring I saw a guy trade like he got like food and he he paid in bullets. And then the, the person who made the food who took the bullets is like, Oh, this is perfect because I know this guy over there who's taking bullets. And then I, I don't remember what he was getting. He's like, I think I'm gonna go get some gold backs for bullets or something. And I'm gonna spend those gold backs on something else over at this other hub. Like, like, wow, this is this is great. Like, this is a really, really interesting thing. It's like I, a lot of people, you know, I, I've heard like a lot of people say, well, so if you're not gonna have the dollar, what are you just gonna have gold backs? What are you just, you're gonna trade in crypto forever? It's how about we don't have to have just one currency? How about competing currencies? How about whatever is convenient for people? If I specialize in all the different kinds of bullets that anybody could ever need, and I have all these different things, and there's people who are shooting all different kinds of guns, why can't they just trade in those things? What is useful to you that I have? Why is it like wait, everything has to be changed into Federal Reserve notes? And then we'll trade through those, and that'll be the one universal medium. And if you don't use those, you know why? It's because they tax you with Federal Reserve notes. Sure. How many bullets do we have to give the government if we trade in bullets? You know, I don't want to give them any, but the same thing with dollars. 
I may have only spent three days at Porkfest. I got there late, and some people will never forgive me for it, aka Jeremy Kaufman. Um, I forgive but, you because uh, of your fire January six speech. So uh, <laughs> in the in, in the three days in the Friday, Saturday, Sunday that I was there, I did not spend a single dollar. I did not spend a single U.S. dollar. Um, I did give somebody some Bitcoin cash for letting me stay at their site. I did purchase some coffee and breakfast in exchange for sterling silver rounds. I did uh, trade some ammunition uh, for some different ammunition and some drinks. And like, like there was true barter. And I used things. I used real money because it's things that had real value to people. Uh, and that's exciting. I get, I tipped a kid in platinum, a kid that was deli- trying to sell programs in the morning, and I gave her a platinum bar. Um, so I mean, that's pretty cool. Not, yeah, I haven't yeah. heard of that one yet. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, and she was all excited and for it and freaked out and didn't know what it was worth. I said more than the dollar you asked for. Now go away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but but like that is what you can do at Porkfest, and I I look forward to being able to do that. Um, in the world outside just the Free State Project community, because they're it's not exclusive to Porkfest, because we still have our market days here in New Hampshire and Manchester and at the Shell on the Seacoast and at Bardo Farm and out in Keene. There are still times where the Free State community gets together where you can barter and you can engage in these counter economic practices. But the point of the Free State Project is to make it so you can do this in everyday activities i want to be able to go to market basket and pay with gold baskets gold back for my uh for my groceries i want to be able to go to eat and pay in cryptocurrency anywhere i go i want to be able to go uh to the gun range and pay for my range time with an ounce of silver like those are the the goals to me that i think are accessible not even long term i think it just takes enough free staters asking enough vendors to make it happen <laughs> yeah. Hey, we have a question in the chat here. Um, is there any plan to find a bigger venue for pork fest? I think it's a pretty legitimate question, and I, I, I do think it's probably worth uh mentioning. So not that I know of off the top of my head. Um, there's always a plan to reevaluate the venue for pork fest. Uh, but we've been at Rogers Campground for feels like forever now. Mm-hmm. Um there's been like yeah. I think yeah. one or two pork fests that weren't at Rogers and for, the, for those of you who've been around long enough on some of the OG old school free staters, uh, the very first Pork Fest, Pork Fest Zero, the uh, journey to New Hampshire that was before the Free State Project even picked New Hampshire, was at Rogers Campground. And then they went elsewhere, and we ended up going back. So uh, there's something to be said about the fact that the staff and the ownership at Rogers are kind of our people. They're very uh, friendly. They allow us to do what we do, and they welcome us doing what we do. Um, where we might have outgrown the size of the campground. I think that just means we have to start annexing the land across the street. We yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a nice spot. Very libertarian annexing land. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we can purchase yeah. it. All right. Well, we will purchase the property across the street. I know there's been an ongoing group of people who've been trying to put together plans to purchase Rogers, the owner. Yeah. This thing about retiring. And you know what? A purchase and an expansion might make more sense than relocating. I think if we annex it, we just tell them that God gave it to us and then they'll <laughs> stop asking questions. Just bulldoze Listen, their houses and set stuff up. So there you, no you just left Utah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and oh here's here's another another comment from the chat. And I think this is also correct. I think Rogers is one of the biggest campgrounds in the state. Uh as far as I know, maybe not like just just like uh the whole grounds wise. But as far as like number of campsites and number of spaces, it's definitely on the bigger side. There's, I believe, over 200 campsites there. Um, yeah, the which is a lot, that... a lot of room, and they pack it full. You know, they load it up over there uh, to find something bigger that also has the room and the facilities, like a pavilion and all that stuff. Um, a pretty, pretty impressive task i don't know that we can find that hey if you got any ideas though send them over because so open to it what if we just all climbed mount washington and spread out like all over it for a whole week <laughs> they can't arrest all of us yeah it's like true. homeless libertarians we'll move in with the bears there we go 
So I have had a th- I have had some plans and theories, and I pitched this off to some people. I want to pitch it off to you guys. So the, if you go further up north in New Hampshire, there's some a bunch of old national forest land. And one of the beautiful things about national forests and the Bureau of Land Management is while they are technically federal lands and federal property, there's enough gray areas in the rules where you can just kind of camp without permission and do whatever the hell you want on federal property within a certain kind of a leeway. It's- backcountry and, stuff yeah yeah and uh I mean, that's how they get away with burning man every year nobody ever pulls a right. permit for burning man nobody ever gets permission from the government for burning man they just put up a website and say we're going to have a bunch of people meet at this gps coordinate in the middle of the desert and we're going to have a festival it's on blm land and national parks land and yep. nobody tells them not to uh, there is a decent amount of that land up in the north country in new hampshire uh and there is also an opportunity, I think, because if you go far enough up into New Hampshire, into the Pittsburgh area, bordering Canada, wet, back where, up where you'll be closer to Montreal than to Manchester, um, there's a huge amount of this land. And in April of 2024, there's going to be a full solar eclipse in which Pittsburgh, New Hampshire will be in the path of totality. Oh, nice. And I think a bunch of anarchists <laughs> like ourselves should organize maybe an April winter camping festival up in Pittsburgh on some of this government land where they're not allowed to tell us no. Yeah, yeah I think uh, idea. <clears throat> I think an I alternative like, like uh, uh, event is a good idea. But if you move Pork Fest up to Pittsburgh, I think you'll actually have fewer people show up because Lancaster's already far enough away. So, and it's it's weirdly fairly central to new england right it's like it's not but it is you know two hours from a bunch of new york two hours from like uh, you know a lot of vermont two hours from a lot of new hampshire two hours from like a bunch of maine it's yeah, kind of cool maine people this it's year. two hours from civilization in any direction right if you whether you fly into boston or manchester or portland uh maine or whatever burlington vermont they didn't have an airport there it's, time. Uh, it's pretty Who much cares? two hours. No matter like no matter where in New England you fly, for, or like I guess Rochester, New York, could probably be like six hours or something. But so here's a question, Reed. <laughs> you said one of your favorite parts of Pork Fest was my January sixth speech, and I agree that was one of my favorite parts of Pork Fest. Because I get to remind everybody that you are a threat to the government. The people who say no, the people who stand up, the people who value freedom, are a threat to the government. The real good question here in the five dollar super chat: How do we grow the libertarian movement without drawing the ire of the government once we reach a real threat level? Someone like you, someone who's become one of the faces of libertarian alternative media and helping grow the sphere of libertarian influence online uh, as we grow this movement using kind of our radical messaging and our like the way that yourself and I and others do just kind of egg people on to like you it's time to stand up it's time to fight and it's time to take a stand against the government like at some point we will get big enough to become a threat how do we avoid becoming a big enough threat that the government acts well i think you and i are pretty much in lockstep agreement about <laughs> january 6th like to be clear for those who don't know how i feel about it i think it was incredibly stupid like you didn't they didn't accomplish anything <laughs> And all I mean, the only thing they did accomplish was demonizing themselves and giving the media a golden opportunity to paint them as dangerous people who need to be under surveillance. You know, like the the joke Justin and I always make is if you're going to do an insurrection, like do it right and have a plan. That was like, you know, you got us all excited for nothing. We hear their storm in the Capitol. And then a couple hours later, we see it was a guy in a buffalo hat and some furries or whatever, basically, who ran in and farted on Nancy Pelosi's (laughs) desk. And that was about it. But, uh, yeah, in all seriousness, like, I don't think storming federal buildings or, you know, attacking police officers is going to win the long game. I think it's more about uh, nullifying federal, um, you know, federal laws that are put out there which new hampshire has sort of done with this latest legislation that sununu signed with gun control um you know i think uh even though i have a lot of criticisms of desantis i think a lot of the things he's done have been like an aggressive pushback against the federal government without actually like going to war with them so i think you know creating your own autonomy and removing yourself from government systems 
and then using your own state to push back up against the federal government and create more opportunities for freedom is the most effective way. It's the long run way to win. Um, so I would suggest we just keep doing the same stuff we're doing and don't plan to march on Washington anytime soon because that's how they get an excuse to just murder all of you uh, and get the public to support it. I totally agree. I think the the best step we can take is nullification type of laws where it's like rather than saying we're going to try to um, make make Washington libertarian or we're going to like take Washington, which I think is a stupid idea. Like we're, I don't even, we shouldn't even take New Hampshire. I'm sorry. We shouldn't even take like Boston or Vermont or Maine. It's like, no, no, no. New Hampshire. We're New Hampshire people. We will make New Hampshire the most libertarian state. And if that means we have to say, hey. If uh, federal gun laws are passed and federal agents try to come enforce federal gun laws that go against New Hampshire gun laws, which are that you there are no gun laws, <clears throat> New Hampshire law enforcement will arrest federal law enforcement and prosecute yeah. them because they are criminals. And that's the best way forward, because then you're not like putting a target on your back because you're not ever making the first move. You know, you're only responding when you've been when you've been violated, you know, when you've been uh, aggressed upon. And it's uh, your PR uh, in that situation is so much easier to handle than if you're trying to like go bring some belief and and force it on other people. That's not going to work. Yeah, uh, I just want to address what Matthew's saying about the FBI motivating the the situation on January 6th. And Ray Epps like, yeah, I totally agree. But not every single person who ran into the Capitol building was a Fed. Like there were people who were swept up in the moment. But it was 100% Fed inspired, I think. And that just goes to prove my point. Like if the Feds are encouraging you to do something, it's probably a bad idea. It's probably not going to help you out in the long run. So the entirety of January 6th was just a giant fucking mistake. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, it didn't get them any election integrity or anything or whatever they said they oh, wanted. No. All it's done is given the uh you know the intelligence agencies and the media and the current regime all the excuses they need to terrify people into thinking that half the country are a bunch yep. of racist neo-nazis who need their guns taken away and need to be under constant surveillance so no to me the absolute only positive to come out of january 6 was what basically what i ranted about was congressmen members of congress members of the ruling class of this government in this country went on national television and admitted for the first time in history that they were afraid of the people they rule, that they yeah. feared for their lives when an unarmed grandmother and a LARPer wearing a bear costume wandered into their holy hall. And to me, that was one of the most amazing things I'd ever seen, but it was dashed very quickly by the response being, we're going to criminalize this behavior. We're going to yeah. demonize this behavior to the point where we're going to use the media cycle to brainwash every American to think this is bad and that is the unfortunate side effect now to your point about nullification something that went unnoticed here in new hampshire by a lot of free staters and libertarians and i think just the timing well it couldn't have been better timing couldn't have been worse at the same time on saturday morning as we were all enjoying the winding down of pork fest getting into the height of pork fest and the final night before the burning of the porcupine governor chris sununu signed house bill 1178 which nullified all federal gun laws in new hampshire uh doesn't quite make it impossible to enforce them but it does say that no new hampshire law enforcement sheriff state deputy and anything can be compelled to assist federal law enforcement in the enforcement of federal gun laws in the state of New Hampshire, which means if you don't have a tax stamp for that suppressor, if you don't have a tax stamp for those collected parts that can be assembled into a short barreled rifle, if the need arises, then the federal officer won't get assistance from your local sheriff in tracking you down. And so that makes New Hampshire the first true Second Amendment sanctuary state in this country. I love that. So it's a good first step. Yeah, so, sure. no, again, with another super chat, libertarian candidates need to put up some amount of money in a trust that if they don't execute their promises, it's donated to the FSB. Well, the Free State Project can't endorse <laughs> any actions taken by political candidates in the political game or involved in politics. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization and technically have no opinion on politics. Us as individuals do. And your opinions of your hosts don't necessarily reflect that of the board of directors or the Free State Project itself. Um, now, I don't think libertarian candidates need to put up money, but I think libertarian candidates and all politicians need some method of accountability. 
And I think that's something what libertarians in New Hampshire have done actually fantastic at in the past few years is creating a system to hold politicians accountable for voting against liberty with things like the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, the gold standard, oh, the yeah. Libertarian Party, the House Liberty Caucus. Um, we have ways to hold our politicians accountable. We primary them. And we make sure that the Liberty majority in the state house of New Hampshire maintains its majority with a principled stance on Liberty instead of a vocal one. Um, it's great too, because all the, all those organizations that do that, they're not even the free state project. They're part of the free state movement at large, I guess, you know, they're, they're libertarians who are here for the cause of making New Hampshire the freest state. But it's like, the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance is a couple of people that got together after getting New Hampshire and were like, hey, here's an idea for how we like, you know, measure each bill that comes through or each legislator that comes through and, and hold them to a, a high standard. But by like designing a standard and we're going to we're going to evaluate each each legislation and each uh, uh, senator or representative case by case, bill by bill, vote by vote. And that's like the tedious, meticulous work that people who come to New Hampshire are willing to do, but you don't get anywhere else. I love it. So, Reed, what is next for you? What are you working on now that you're settling in? I mean, you've landed in New Hampshire. It's the final welcome home here. <coughs> um, but, like, what where, What do you want to work on? I know you're, you're going to get involved with the Kauffman campaign and with LPNH um, and the Liberty community moving forward. But, like, what have you seen not done that you want to get done? And where do you think you'll find your niche in New Hampshire? Well, yeah, I was uh, I went from working 60 hours a week to touring the country to going to pork fest to finally having some time. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of work, uh, setting up a website, uh, doing some stuff with my podcast. Uh, and I moved into uh, Hinsdale, New Hampshire. Um, but yeah, I mean, the short term, I'm going to be working on Kaufman's campaign, helping the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire and the Free State Project out in any way they can. But honestly, I have ambitions to run for office, not this coming season or the one after, but probably in 2026. My reasoning being I, I can't even run this year. Obviously, it's too late. Uh, the next season is going to be the presidential season, and I want to be involved in potential campaigns that might come up then. But after that, I am open to running for state house. Uh, trying to get involved with that or Congress or something. I, I would love to eventually run for uh, for U.S. Congress. And, you know, I'd love to do it as a libertarian. Uh, but if I have to do it as a Republican to get in, I wouldn't be opposed to that either. But I would rather do it as a libertarian. And I'd like to get in there and just uh, draw attention as I do already. Uh, to important issues and be a thorn in the side of everybody. I don't think that there's any chance I could actually make any substantive change, but I would like to raise awareness about a lot of things. Uh, but that could change. I don't know. I mean, that's four years away from now, but that is my long-term plan right now. Um, and I'm also going to work part-time truck driving in New Hampshire. I always want to keep one foot in that blue collar world. So I don't become an upper echelon elitist speaking <laughs> from an ivory tower. So that's the plan right now. We'll see how things go. And no does want to ask what skin in the game you're going to put up. If you decide to run, what skin in the game will you put up? If you decide to run, um, I guess I don't understand the question. He thinks you should donate to a trust fund that if you go back on your project, <laughs> donate to ah. the project. Uh, but we'll, we'll we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, it's been a fun show. Thank you for joining us, Reed. And again, again, welcome home to the free state of New Hampshire. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, everyone, for watching, for the chats, questions, comments, and the super chats. And until next time, if you guys want to learn more about the Free State Project, check out fsp.org. Uh, you can learn all about the fantastic movement for the greatest and largest intentional community ever being built, one based around freedom. If you're not here and you want to visit, you can check out the Visit New Hampshire tab with all the tips and tricks on how to 
plan your visit, how to get here, the best times to visit, the best places to visit, and what to do when you're here. And for those of you here but not quite plugged in, check out fsp.org slash calendar. You can find an event every day of the week all across the state where you can plug in with local libertarians, local free staters, with the most jam-packed calendar of events in the entire liberty community worldwide. I dare you to find one with more local events because I haven't been able to and I've looked. And we've talked a lot about Porkfest tonight. Porkfest, the premier liberty event every single year, the premier camping event, getaway, and party for those of you who enjoy it. Get your tickets now for pork fe- at porkfest.com for next year. They are already on sale. They will go fast. We've sold out two years in a row. I expect we'll sell out even faster next year. So that's porkfest.com. You can get your tickets today. I'm sure there's a code or something. Dennis will give it to us for next week. And until then, tune in and be free. Thanks, everybody. Have a Join morning. the Discord for the code. Oh, yeah. Follow Kevin and those in the Discord. They'll get you the code in the Discord. Um, and then we will see you guys next week. Be free or die. Don't let the freedom pass you by. Stand up proud and strong and lead this country on. Live free or die. From the village green to the mountains high. Yankee voices sing the song of liberty. In 1623, she touched the hand of history and led the colonies on. Independence was won, and the spirit lives today to guide America on her way. New Hampshire standing free, the home of liberty. Live free or die, don't let the freedom pass you.